Hello everybody, Bryos here and today we are looking at one of the Macs from the Rivals Pack. The Rivals Pack being the Mac Pack that dropped in December 2021 and it was kind of a surprise to the community because when it dropped you are able to get the Macs, well, almost immediately upon released and you get a Sun Spider, the Ambush and this baby here. This baby is the 65-ton Innersphere Battle Mac, the Roughneck, the Innersphere Mac that PGI designed some years back. Yep, it's an in-house design. And the name of this Hero Mac is called The Bolt. Being a Hero Mac is a very nice pattern. I actually do enjoy this uh, worn-out pattern quite a lot. And it gives you a 30% C-bill bonus. Mine says 35 because I use a cockpit item to boost it by an additional 5%. So anyway, for the 65 ton inner sphere battle mic, the bolt, you might have seen or will see soon videos on this bill or rather a bill by Baradul, TTB or some other established YouTubers. But for you guys today, I've decided to run something a bit different. Not as effective as some bills, but still kind of fun and sometimes you just want to mix it up a bit. So by the way, the Roughneck, the bolt, the best thing about it are actually the four ballistic hard points high mounted as you can see. But they are pretty obvious, so easy to pick out, just like the Blood Asp. And the arms actually have missile hard points, and they go here. So the missile mounts are also high mounted, right along cockpit level. So try to use the ballistics and or the missile mounts. So anyway, what build am I running? Well, it's kind of a derpy build, but still can be kind of effective, but it's a challenge to play. It's a challenge to play because it has an XL255 engine. An XL engine on a Roughneck is not exactly the best idea because the Roughneck is known for its tankiness and lots of defensive quirks. But the high mounts are the torso mounts and they're pretty easy to pick out, just like the Blood Asp. And if you lose a torso with an XL engine, in a sphere XL engine, it's instant death for you. So this guy isn't as tanky as you would like to think. But for the weapons, it's running a high DPS, high S DPS, sustained DPS build. Some people call this combination a chainsaw build. And this is basically a dual rotary AC5 engine as its main weapons for sustained DPS, doing lots of damage if you can keep the rounds hitting the enemy, backed up by two AC2s for the occasional minimal burst damage, but lots of range. Five tons of ammunition for the rotary AC5, and only three tons for the AC2. But these ammunitions, these amounts of ammunition is more than enough. And Ironically, you got to be careful of the heat because this weapon systems combination do build up quite a lot of heat and it's not as tanky as you would think. So you have to be really careful about positioning. The arms are stripped because there is nothing going into the arms. So you need the tonnage. And that's it. So kind of a weird build, but I do enjoy playing this once in a while. So anyway, as for the skills, 41 SPs into the firepower tree. Within using only ballistic weapons, you would like to get two nodes of magazine capacity to increase the ammunition. And with the rotary AC5s, you want the two nodes of enhanced rec chance, or not chance, sorry, it's rec duration. So basically, it reduces the ram down duration. So not too bad, and the jam duration. Really useful when you have rotary ACs or UX. And the rest of the weapon systems do give you a few other bonuses, like a cooldown bonus of 7.5%, which actually affects only the AC2. Interestingly enough, it generates lots of heat because Rec 5s do generate quite a bit of heat. So heat reduction of 10.5 is really nice. And a range boost of 11 and a velocity boost of 6%. So moving on to survival. One thing about mechs with uh, defensive quirks like armor and structure quirks, you want to get the survival tree. So I've put in 20 SPs into survival. That gives me an armor and structure bonus of 13.6% and 12.8%, giving it a bit more survivability. But because of the XL, you can't use its survivability well because it's, well, scary once you lose your sight torso. Not so scary actually because you're dead. So yeah, you gotta be careful. No mobility bonus, so we need the SPs. So we gotta allocate the 91 SPs carefully. 20 SPs into operations. Uh, yet again, this is my standard for 5 notes or cool run for 10% bonus to heat dissipation and heat containment 5 notes for 15% increase to heat capacity. Um, all this trying to allow it to do as much damage as it can before you have to stop firing or shut down. Zero sensor tree, so just have to be careful of missiles and lock-ons to find cover near you. Always play knowing where the nearest hard cover is. And finally for auxiliary tree, 10 SPs, which is kind of standard for me. Two cool shots, which are enhanced by all these, with the cool shot cooldown, so you can fire the second cool shot faster. As you notice, this 
skill tree is built around heat. So allowing me to fire as much as I can before I need to fire a cool shot or shut down. Playing a bit safe, so you can actually sacrifice a bit of the heat related skills if you don't want to spend so much on that. But anyway, to round it off, two cool shots, oh sorry, two strikes for additional damage. So that's it guys and girls, that is the new Roughneck the Bolt with its original pattern and colours. The 65 ton mech in a sphere mech that was released in the Rivals pack. Not a bad pack if you ask me, um, yeah, but this build, like I said, not the most effective, but sometimes, like I said earlier, you just want to mix it up a bit and have a bit of fun. So anyway, let's get down to the gameplay and I'll show you this fragile tanky boy. Ironically, it's a weird sentence saying that. Fragile and tanky mech in action. So let's go. So here I find myself on the ever popular Hibernal Rift map for the very first showcase match. And popular as this map is, it is unfortunately pretty prone to NASCAR. Most of the fights revolve around Charlie 4 dropship or the ramp on Charlie 3. But unfortunately, teams tend to rotate from one grid to another and back around the center hill most of the time. But as you can see, I'm right now on Charlie 4 hill and that's a good place to hold. Got good lines to the targets in Delta 3 and ultimately you want them to drop into Charlie 4 low so you can basically just shoot down from above like a bowl of death. But as you can see, my team has rotated and sometimes you just gotta follow the team. So with some targets on our left flank at Delta 4, it looks as though the team is going to rotate into Charlie 3 anyway. Seriously, Reckless. Seriously. So like I said, not a good thing. Look at this Corsair and Jaeger. They're actually chasing the Charlie 4 targets. But it's a natural behaviour, so I'm just going to follow them and give them some support. Better to stay together. But by doing this, we concede Charlie 4, which is not a good thing. Charlie 4, Echo. Dropship fight. Don't chicken out. So call is made to fight a dropship. Just tell the, enemy, the friendly team, dropship fight. And here they come up, right into our firing lines. Allowing my wrecked and my AC to do some damage. One thing about the high mounts on the bolt, it allows you to heal hump really nicely. Like using thermal vision, I can see all these targets. But they can barely see me. Always keep an eye on the minimap. So as you look at the minimap, I'm surrounded by friends. And that's an yeah, ideal position nice. to be in. Slowly heal humping. Looking for a bit of an enemy to shoot. One target far away, 530 meters, which is fine for me. My rotaries have a range of about 500 meters, well the, well, the UX is about, about 800 meters for the UX. So one Niger far away, he's distracted. Shooting those on my right. Poor positioning so it allows me to drill lots of rounds into him. This Annihilator. Look at the minimap, my team is rotating from my right. Echoes open CT, executioner. They are pushing center. Yeah, Please so they're gonna... Rotate. Yeah, they're rotating. So they're gonna come from my right. No, you're rotating, guys. Pushing into dropship. That leaves me kind of far behind. I'm only moved at 63. Kind of a decent speed, but not really fast. Damn it, team. Yeah, team has rotated. So always expect that to happen. So using this rock on my left for cover. Uh, they're pushing our rear. Yes, yes. 3 nil. Dropship. So the importance of calling a grid like dropship and Jaeger's open CT. Boom Jaeger. Staying together is actually pretty darn important. So here we are pushing into Charlie 3. They are caught in the low ground at Charlie 3. This is when you press the advantage, calling out targets. The arms are actually basically just there to shield. So after you fire, twist quickly to allow the arms to absorb damage. Target acquired. Oh, he's dead. Acquired. I thought he was alive. Heat vision gives you good visibility as you can see. Hotel there. Takes the damage and falls back. This very chat fire starter. Very aggressive. Hotel. So time to push is 7-2. Time to move in. Right torso is caught. So gotta be really careful. Only a few mechs left. Gonna be a bit more aggressive and push in. Try to get some kills and damage. 
Right. There's hotel that showed them earlier. Oh, behind the hill. Thank so they, you. they seem to have rotated into Charlie 4. So yeah, they're well, trying well, to catch, acquired. catch the last four. Low target acquired. They seem to be distracted by the big boys above me. So it's time to bring in Oh they I cut the middle flank. In there goes down. Caught dragon. Drag box, unfortunately. Takes the brunt of my UX, uh, my Rack 5s and UX, uh, AC2s. You yeah, are good to confuse. Yeah, Rack 5s and AC2s. So the Mad Dog, which I shot earlier, he too goes down. Solo kill for me. And this poor guy. What's this guy doing here? Oh, he's kind of stuck. This Osiris. 5 ER mediums. Okay. He's late. I'll never get him. I'm too slow. He's the last one. Yep. So that's it, guys. It's a glorious victory. So even though there was a bit of a NASCAR in this match, it wasn't too bad. And instead of whining about it, just stay at the team, focus fire, call targets, and if you can, count the NASCAR. So any, not too bad a performance in this boat. 847 damage with all that wrecking. 4 KMDDs, 2 solo kills, and yeah, a pretty much decent performance with a nice match draw of 551. So let's move on to the next match. So here we are again on Hibernal Rift for the second showcase match and like I said it's a pretty popular map but this time the game mode is skirmish so there's no circle, no pee stain and it's just a matter of smashing the enemy into oblivion. And in this particular match I'm doing a nice casual two-man drop with Thundercats also in a roughneck, his powerhouse and yeah. But anyway, gonna move along the outer ages in this map and try to use my range because my AC2s have about 800 meters range and my road is about 500 and yeah don't really want to NASCAR either. So covering the center from the edge, Delta 2. One Corsair down low. Gonna check that it's clear. Then I'm gonna engage Foxtrot with a hail of bullets. It's a short range Corsair build. You add large pulses and missiles. So I can stay here safely for a while. But sure enough, the enemy brings in reinforcements and it's time to drop it down. Gotta go in NASCAR. Yep, Charlie Trilo, everybody. Only one. Stop, yeah, there. There they are. Charlie Trilo. Good comms by Thundercats. So I'm going to hold this spot as much as I can. This little ramp in Delta 3 is a nice spot. Let's stay, don't rotate. So go on friendly assault in the low ground. So I'm going to cover him. That's not a good spot. Corsair is still there. Marauder, gulp, left also. Team is, enemy team is trying to push Charlie Trilo, which is a mistake. This guy made mistakes. Ronald to right torso comes out of cover. Gryphon tries to be aggressive but goes down to my hail of bullets. Artillery strike online. So they try pick again. One adder. But I don't have much uh, pinpoint burst damage. Point. The pinpoint burst damage of wreck is really bad because of the wind up and the hail of bullets. Always a flaw with Rex, as I mentioned in my Warhammer video. Kilo Roughneck, right to also. All in Charlie Tree low. You don't have to go into the low ground, but you can shoot them from up. Marauder Gulf still alive. Now he's dead. So as you can see, my team is rotating into the low ground in Charlie Tree. But we have a 2 nil advantage. And I have a good spot at the edge of this ravine. So we're going to do some suppressive fire. Well, the big boys below move up. New target acquired. As you can see on my right, some friendlies are hill humping along the center. New target acquired. I'm actually trying to put some range between me and the enemy right now. Letting the friendlies in front spot and draw aggro. Like I said, this mech is tanky because there's armor quirks, but also fragile because of Excel. A statement that con a statement that contradicts itself. But it's 2 deal now, as you can see from the minimap, my team has moved up quite a bit, both on my left and right. Hotel coming to support Fox right So as you can see on the minimap, team is moving up, so it's time for me to move up soon. Hotel's side to Yeah, at this point I'm really scared of lights hunting me down, because I'm alone. Yep, now we push for the win. 7-4. Yeah, it being 7-4, it's time to move up. I'm only caught from my left to rear, so I've got a bit of front armor. Juliet Archer left torso, he spotted. A lot of these targets are just facing me aim aimlessly or whatever you call it. 
that allows me to just Forest drill them. When you face a wreck, right side, like when you face a box. build with wrecks, just toss a twist or don't stare at it too long. By toss a twisting, you spread the damage. Target spotted. New target acquired. That's how you deal with wreck max and they're rocking and blinding. New target yeah, they come acquired. into Delta 4. Yeah, the CT. So the remainders, four of them, some are lights. They jumping Irby caught my CT. Gotta be really careful now. Oh, one Hunchy there gets eaten by me. Oh, that's it, man. One last mech. It's the Irby that caught me. Gonna try moving. Do some damage to Delta here. Sorry. As we all know, Irby's are tanky. Oh, yeah. just spreading the damage as he jumps. Blow off his leg though. The pitch is not too good, but don't need it. Nicely done. He goes down to the enemy, or rather the friendly team. So that would have been a pretty good match for me, winning 12-6 and showcasing the ability of this mech to fight at mid-range. And yeah, 702 damage, 3 KMDDs, 2 kills, 8 components, giving some mid-range support to my team, allowing me to get a nice match score of 4 7, 5. So ladies and gents, that's it for this rather different Bolt build on the Roughneck. Um, the Bolt being the Roughneck hero from the Rivals pack. Um, not too effective because of the XL, but sometimes you just want to try things a bit different. But anyway guys, have fun and I'll see you on the battlefield. Ciao.